Hi, welcome to room nine, our region's largest classroom. I'm Mrs. Williams. I teach first grade in the Windsor C1 School District. That's in Imperial, Missouri. This is Mrs. Forth. Hi, everybody. I'm from the Rockwood School District. I'm excited to be here with you today as we learn a little bit about reading and math. So before we start, we really want to know, where are you? Are you near the airport? Top Golf? Are you out at Six Flags? That's where I live. Yay! Are you near the Magic House? Closer to the zoo? Maybe you are close to the St. Louis Arch or the Mississippi River. Where I'm at, I'm a little bit south of St. Louis in Herculaneum near the Mississippi River. It looks like we have friends from all over St. Louis joining us today. Thanks for joining us, guys. Very exciting. Okay, let's go ahead and start with our welcome home. I'm going to point to the words. Feel free to join along with me as I say I'm ready. Welcome, welcome everyone. How are you today? We are so glad to be with you learning math and reading too. And speaking of how are you today, we need to do a zone check because before we get ready to learn each day, we check in on our body and brain. Really smart scientists that study brains know that happy, calm brains do the best learning. If you are in the green zone, that means that you are calm, you are happy, and you are ready to complete your work, help others, and reach your daily goals. And this is the hand signal. So if you are in green zone, show me you're green and good to go. If you are in the blue zone, you might be feeling a little slow and low today. You might need to draw a picture get a hug, or think some happy thoughts to be ready to learn. Your hand signal will look like this. If you are in the yellow zone, you're maybe a little frustrated, anxious, or maybe just really excited in a good way, but not ready to learn yet. So you need to take some deep breaths, get a hug, or talk to an adult that can help you be ready. If you are in the red zone, you have flipped your lid, your hand signal looks like this, and you're probably not learning with this right now, you're very angry or upset about something. You need to stop, get help from an adult, take some deep breaths, and check the size of your problem. So show me your hand signal. Are you green zone and good to go? I hope you are. If you are blue, yellow, or red, choose one of our strategies to help you get ready to learn. Are you guys ready to get started today? All right, before we start, let's do our room nine chant. Can you read this along with us? Okay. I am smart. smart. I am kind, I am brave, I am me. Let's start out by playing the robot game. Are you guys ready? What? You don't know the robot game? It is so much fun. Let me teach it to you. The robot game is when I say a word and then you turn it into robot language. Do you want to hear me try it first? Okay, so if I said mad, and turned it into robot language, it would sound like this. Mm, ah, d. Did you hear I slowed it down? And I said each of the sounds in the word. Do you want to try that? All right, I'm going to say words, and you guys are going to be robots and slow the word down and see if you can say each sound in the word. Okay, so the word I'm going to say next is at. Good job. Let's do that one together. Ready? Bat. B. A. T. You want to do another one? Okay, how about wish? W. I. Sh. Ooh, I love those robot moves out there. Okay, how about crush? Er. Uh. Sh. You guys are really good robots. Oh, I even saw one of these. <laughs> okay, how about, hmm. Pet. Ready? Et. Oh, I heard three sounds in there. You guys are good robots. All right, let's do one more. How about hmm, dig? D -i -g. Good job. Air high five on that one. Even though the robot game seems a little so silly and fun to play, guess what it actually does? It exercises your reading and writing muscles. Being able to slow down 
and hear all the sounds in the word is going to make you become a better reader and writer. So we can play that game a lot, and you can also play that game at home. Ask somebody to say a word, and then you turn it into robot language, just like we did. Bat, b, a, t. And we said each sound in the word, didn't we? Good job, readers and writers. Okay, last week, if you were with me, we talked about four important words, four sight words, which means they're words that we need to look at and know in a snap. Yeah, these are words that we're going to see all the time in books. So it makes sense to help our brain remember them in a snap. I see some of you snapping with me. Let's look at the words that we learned last week. And then I'm going to teach you four new words for this week. Okay, so last week we learned the word a, the, c, and I. Good job. Are you ready to learn new ones? Okay, as we learn a new word, remember we want to study it. As we study a word, you might put on your binoculars and you look at it closely and tell me some things that you notice about the word. You ready for the first word? Okay, here we go. Hmm, what are you noticing? Yeah, I see two letters also. You see an A. You see a T? Yeah, this word is made up of a A and a T. And together, the word is at. Can you say at? Yeah, this word is at. Say it one more time. Good work. Okay, ready for another word? Look closely. Hmm. What are you noticing about this word? This one also has an A. Yeah, you're right. One, two, three, three letters in this word. Yeah, none of the letters are tall letters and none of them hang down low either. This word is can, C-A-N, can, say can, can. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> I heard some of you already say this word. What can you tell me about this word? It has two letters. You see an M and an E. The word is me. Say me. The word is me. Okay, friends, one more word. Yeah, this is a longer word, isn't it? How many letters do you see? Four letters. Yeah, two of them are the same. There's two O's in the middle of this word. And there's two tall letters. Look, the letter L is a tall letter and the letter K is a tall letter. The word is look. Can you say look? Look, okay. Let's say all of these words again. I'm gonna say it and then I want you to say it after me. Are you ready? Okay, at. Can. Me, look, great. Do you wanna combine them with the words that you learned last week? Okay, here we go. This is a bit of a challenge, isn't it? Okay. A, at, can, me, Look, the, see, I. Good work, readers. Remember, these are words that we want to know in a snap. Awesome. So you'll never guess what happened. I got another letter in my mailbox. The Feed Me Monster must have left Lettersville and gone somewhere else. Do you want me to read the letter I got to you? Okay, here we go. Dear Mrs. Ford, that's me. We need your help. The Feed Me Monster came to town. 
What can we feed him? From your friends in Canland. So he went from Lettersville to Canland. Interesting. Do you think you can help me figure out this mystery? Yeah, let's see if we can figure out how the people in Canland can feed the Feed Me Monster. Okay, hmm, here's the Feed Me Monster. See him? Okay, so I have some words that I already wrote on some cards to see if maybe we can solve the mystery of the Feed Me Monster. Okay, so, hmm, how about, This word right here, it's dig. Can you say dig? Let's ask him, feed me monster. Do you want to eat dig? Let's see. <gasps> oh no, I thought for sure he was going to eat dig, but he didn't. He spit that right out, didn't he? Okay, so I'm going to write the word dig over here next to the word no, you see my sad face like, no, that's not the one. No dig, hmm. Okay, let's try sat, say sat. Hey, feed me monster, do you wanna eat the word sat? He didn't spit it out, did he? He liked the word sat. What should I do? Yeah, write it on the yes side. Okay. No dig. Yes to sat. Hmm. Hmm. What are we thinking? Yeah, I. I yeah, this is confusing to me too. I think we should just try another word and see. Okay, how about the word tap? Say tap. All right, feed me monster. Will you eat tap? He ate it. He ate the word tap. What should I do? That's right, write it over here. Tap. Okay, let's study. Sat, tap were a yes, dig was a no. Hmm, sat, tap. <gasps> Both of these words have a T in it. Maybe he wants to eat words with a T in it. Do you wanna try it? Okay, I have another word that actually has a T in it. What's this word right here? Pet, pet, say pet. Feed me monster, do you want to eat the word pet? That was not it. It's not that he only likes words with the letter T because that came right out. Oh my goodness. Pet. Hmm. Look very closely. What are you noticing? Hmm. What? They both have an A in it. Sat. Tap. Let's say those words like robots. Ready? Sat. App. They both have the at in the middle. D ig. That doesn't. At. Should we see? You think that could be it? Okay. How about this word right here? It was one of our snap words, wasn't it? Can. Say can. Ah. Mm. I mean, it's worth a try, isn't it? Here we go. Feed me monster, do you want to eat the word can? <gasps> he ate it. He ate the word can. We solved the mystery. That means that we can go back and tell our friends from can land that they can feed him words that have a ah in the middle, the short vowel a. Can you think of other words that he might like? He likes sat. He likes tap. He likes can. What else might he like? Hmm. Mad. Dad. Cat. 
You guys are really good at thinking of words that have a in the middle. Keep thinking, okay? And I think, guess what? It's time to go see Mrs. Williams in math. Thank you so much for playing with me today. Have a great time. Thanks, Mrs. Forth. I bet you guys really grew your brains with Mrs. Forth today. All right, it is time for us to get moving on some math for today. And by the time we're done learning together, we'll be able to say, I can read, write, and count numbers to 20. That's right, peeps, we're going all the way to 20 today. So let's get our brains moving and warmed up with a little bit of counting. We are going to count to 20 and then we're gonna count backwards. Ready? This time we'll do finger ups. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good job. Now this time we're going backwards and we're going to do finger snaps. But if your fingers don't know how to snap yet, put them together like this and push. If you still can't do it, do finger claps. Ready, Freddy? Here we go. Count back from 20. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Zero. Nice job, guys. So last week, we learned all about our numbers from zero to 10. But this week, we're going even further. We're headed all the way to 20. So make sure that you've got your pencil and paper or your whiteboard and marker, or that you've got your finger ready to go because we are going to be writing and reading some numbers. All right, so what's the number that comes after 10? Everybody say, hmm, let me ponder this. If you said 11, you're correct. And once we get past 11, once we get past 11 and 12, we start talking tricky teens. Now, when we got to 10, we had something special. We had two numbers and 11 is the same way. So in 10, the number one comes first. But what two numbers make up 11? Hmm. Well, when we made 10, we decided that we could trade for one tens disc because we had 10 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And we traded it in for a tens disc. But 11 is one more than that. One more 10? Nope, we're not going up 10 more. We're only going up one more past 10. So we have one 10 and one, one. Do you know what 11 looks like? Right now, write it on your board or your paper. Does it look like this? If you made it look like this, you are correct. 11 is a one and a one standing together. Kind of like two sticks. So I'm gonna put my 11 up here. 110 and 11. One. Now we need to spell the word 11. Hmm. I'm going to tell you that 11 is kind of spelled how it sounds. So let's stretch it out. E L E V E N. Ooh, do you hear all those sounds? Try and write it. Do your best. Does it look like this? If you made it look like this, you are correct. Give yourself a thumbs up and a wiggle or a little pat on the back. All right, so if we had 11 and we're going on one more, we're adding on, it's like saying we had 11 and we're adding, that's our plus sign, one equals. So if we had 11 and we go on one more, What number do we have? 10, 11, 12. Do you know what a 12 looks like? I'm gonna tell you that all the numbers that we're working with today, except for one of them, will have a one in front. 
12 has two numbers. Did you make it look like this? Yeah, 11 plus one more is 12. It has one 10 and two ones. 12 is another one that is spelled the way it sounds. Try and write it now. T w l v. Write the sounds you hear. Does it look like this? If you made it look like this, good for you. If you didn't, it's okay. Just fix it now. Oh guys, I'm really excited. Next up is a tricky teen. Do you know why we call them the tricky teens? Because no matter what, you have to put the one in first, but sometimes that's hard to remember. The one always gets to go first in a tricky teen number. Just think of it as one is a boss hog when uh, it's in the teens because it always stands first in line. It does not share with anyone else. It doesn't give anybody else a turn to be first. The one always goes first in the tricky teens. Let me show you what I mean. We had 11, 12, what comes next? 13, you're right. And in 13, the one comes first and then the three. But let me show you why that's so important. Because we have 110, 10, 11, 12, 13. But if we don't put the one first, guess what happens? 13 looks like this. But if we accidentally put the one in the back and the three in the front, we get 31. That's not the same number at all. 31 looks like this. We don't have 31, we have 13. So we have to make sure that our one stands in front no matter what. Everybody say, you tricky teens. Yes. So we have 13. Let's make those sounds and stretch it out. Thirteen. Write it. I'll give you a sec. Does it look like this? Good job. Okay, if we had 13 and we're adding on one more, so 13 plus one more, what's it going to be? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Did you write this number? If you wrote that, you are correct. And I'm gonna tell you that to spell this word, you're putting two words together, four and teen. So if you remember how to spell the number word for four from last week, yay for you. And also, you already know half of the word. Remember four was a tricky one. Did you make it look like this? F-O-U-R and then T-E-E-N. All of our tricky teen numbers are gonna have T-E-E-N at the end. Good for you. What comes next? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? Did you say 15? Yep, we're adding on one more. We've got 15. What did you write? Did you remember to put that one in front? Everybody say, one's the boss. Yep, one's the boss. It has to stand in front. What number did you put behind it? Did you say a one and a five? Now let's stretch that out. Fifteen. Fifteen. Hmm. Did you write it like this? Good for you. I'm so proud of you guys are working so hard to grow your brain. This one is 15. What do you think comes next? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm gonna have it stand up here so you can see it a little bit better. 16 has one 10 and six ones. Did you make it look like this? Now let's write it. So here was our number, 16. It's written exactly how it sounds, and if you remember how to spell six, just put that teen on the end. Does it look like this? 
yeah, so proud of you. If you made a mistake, just fix it. That's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. All right, guys, we've only got four more to go. Next is after 16 comes 17. So we need to add on one more one. We have one in the 10 spot and seven in the one spot. Is that how you wrote it? Does yours look like this? Now write that word, 17, seven, just like we practiced last week. Looking like that, awesome. One more, do you notice we're adding on one each time, we're just getting one bigger, it's like plus one. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, how many ones? Yeah. That's eight. Eight is great. Did you make it look like that? It's one and an eight. Now remember, eight was a tricky word. Just doesn't, it just isn't spelled the way it sounds. Here it is if you can't remember. If you remembered, good for you. This is a really hard one. Guys, we only have two more to go. We're almost to 20. Adding on one more. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Awesome. It looks like this, <laughs> not standing on his head. And we just put together the nine, whoops, and the teen. Looking good. All right, guys, are you ready for this last one? Because something special is going to happen. If we add on one more, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yay, we made it. But guess what? When we have 10 ones, that's the same as a tens disc. So we can trade it for a 10. We have two tens and zero ones, which gives us 20. Go ahead and write it. You did it, guys. We made it. All right. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Come see me tomorrow and Mrs. Forth to grow your brain some more. Make sure that you are safe by keeping your hands to yourself and washing them up. Be respectful by using nice words and be responsible by helping out around your house and doing your work. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.